So today, in keeping with the fact that um, we are, we're working in period six, I thought it would be important for us to timeline the growth of technology and also talk a little bit about the, the process of industrialization in the United States. So what I'm gonna work through with you guys today is essentially gonna be really useful to understanding not only your period six question that you're gonna be doing um, for, for Thursday, but it's also gonna help you understand uh, like comparisons between earlier eras of industrialization like the market revolution and also what's happening later on in like period six as we're studying right now. So let me flip over to my um, hover cam. Okay, uh, and I'd like you to follow along with me if you can. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a timeline. And what I, you can just watch if that's something that you choose to do. But I highly recommend that, you know, as I go through, you timeline this information for yourself as well. Uh, and that you put it in a notebook so that you can use it uh, for your studying and for maybe access later as you get closer and closer to, uh, to the AP test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by essentially um, drawing a timeline down the middle of my piece of paper. And I recommend you doing exactly the same thing, okay? And this timeline, uh, I'm gonna use to break up and explain the process of industrialization in the United States. So we're really gonna be looking at two things. On the top of this line, I'm going to be walking you through essentially the development of new technologies in uh, American history from essentially period three all the way through period seven. And on the bottom, I'm going to be walking you through major economic developments. And really what defines the economy of some of the different eras that we've been talking about. Now economics can be something that's a little tricky for students. Um, so we're gonna walk through this together and if, if you have any kind of questions, you can throw it uh, to me in the, in the chat. Okay, so we're gonna start uh, even before period three, but is important understanding uh, the colonial period. Uh, we're gonna begin in 1660. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of zoom in on this here so that you guys have a, a better look at this earliest time period. So we're starting in 1660. And our first time period that we're gonna look at is about 1660 to 1776, which is the era of the American Revolution. Um, and the economy of this time period is the colonial economy. And the thing that we need to understand about this earliest era that obviously affects as uh, is, is early as the, the American Revolution is the, uh, the concept of mercantilism. So mercantilism is the defining, the defining economic characteristic of the colonies in early American history. And for those that don't remember mercantilism, what it essentially says is that the colonies existed in order to try to provide raw materials to Great Britain. And what that meant was that there was almost no manufacturing in the colonies. The colonies didn't really produce any manufactured goods. All those manufactured goods were produced in Great Britain, uh, and the colonies were instead, their economies were focused on providing those raw materials for Great Britain. So providing tobacco, providing wheat, providing lumber. Um, there was like a shipbuilding industry. Um, there was some mining, but for the most part, uh, most manufactured goods are being made in Great Britain. So this defines the, this time period, and it really defines the relationship between the colonies and Great Britain, um, all the way through the American Revolution. Once the American Revolution is over, however, the United States has to establish an economy of its own. Um, and we start to see an emerging economy um, all in the year, starting in the 1790s. So uh, beginning in the 1790s, and then really kind of going all the way through to uh, 1860, this is where the United States has kind of struck out on its own and it's developing a uh, economy of its own. So there are some major technological advancements that take place 
in this time period that is going to help shape the economy. So let's talk a little bit about what technology is coming about that is gonna be influencing America between 1790 and 1860. So I'm gonna write down tech here. And I'm just gonna kind of list off some of the important innovations that happen that you should be aware of. So Eli Whitney is an important inventor and he's responsible for two major innovations that we wanna be aware of. Um, the first one is the creation of the cotton gin. Uh, which makes it easier to remove uh, the cotton from the seeds. And then um, there is interchangeable parts. Both of these are going to be influential for this era. Other really important inventions during this time period are going to include um, the steamship um, that was pioneered by Robert Fulton. There is uh, the growth of canals during this time period, which are uh, represented by the Erie Canal as well as others in this era. Um, you've got the creation of like railroads in this time period. John Stevens is um, obviously like partially responsible for that, but we even see the beginnings of the first commercial uh, railroads like the B&O Railroad. Uh, and then we uh, see the steel plow, which is affecting farmers out west. And finally, um, we see the creation of the telegraph towards the end of this era, all right, by uh, um, Samuel Morris. So all of these inventions are really important because if you notice, there's some inventions that are going to help mechanize the United States. There's going to be some inventions that improve transportation, such as the steamship and um, the railroad. Uh, there's going to be mass production of, uh, of food uh, in the form of steel, the steel plow. And there's going to be better communication. Now, what this technology does is it allows for the rise of something called the market revolution. And this time period, antebellum America, which is the period before the Civil War, it's economically dominated by this market revolution. So what we want to talk about is what is the market revolution, okay? So um, when we talk about the market revolution, we're talking about a few key developments that I want to go over with you. The first thing is that the markets, in other words, like the places that people are selling to, it would probably help if I had a T here, uh, the places that people are selling to are getting bigger and they're starting to link up. And so what we're seeing is um, the linking up of markets and the creation of a national economy. Okay, so America um, is starting to build an economy that isn't regional anymore. Before this time period, um, most of like the, like the markets were all local. People would produce things for only in the local area. But now all of a sudden um, we're starting to see like the different regions of the United States starting to sell goods to other parts of it. And what's happening is each part of the country is starting to specialize in a specific part of the market. So let's zoom in on this so it's a little easier to, to see. So um, the North, for example, becomes the, uh, the center of the earliest industries in America. America is starting the process of industrializing um, and the North is gonna produce what we call textiles, which are goods that are primarily uh, like cloth, cloth uh, manufactured cloth goods. Uh, the South, especially because of the cotton gin, is going to become the center of cotton production in the United States. And then out West, because of John Deere and the creation of the steel plow and then McCormick and his mechanical reaper, uh, we're going to see the like large scale food production. So each region is kind of specializing in something different uh, and they are producing things for the country as a whole. Now, this obviously leads to other changes as well. So um, one important thing that I've kind of hinted at already, but I just kind of want to 
uh, make sure we understand is that like a big deal with the market revolution is that people are going to go from becoming like subsistence farmers, meaning that they're only producing enough to survive to all of a sudden making surpluses, which they can sell on further and further markets outside of their local area. So I'm going to put that down. People go from subsistence farming to producing surpluses for sale on the market. Sorry if my handwriting is not great. Okay, um, so people go from subsistence farming to producing surpluses for sale on the market. So people, instead of just making enough for their own survival, uh, they begin to grow extra so that they can then at first ship it out um, like, uh, you know, in the, like a bigger and bigger and expanding market, which is helped by those improvements in transportation. So people in like the West and places like Illinois are able to grow corn or grow wheat. And because of canals, because of eventually railroads, uh, send those goods all the way to say the East Coast and make larger number, uh, larger amounts of profit. Um, this is basically the beginning of the growth of capitalism in the United States. So um, more and more people are kind of thinking about the economy in a capitalistic way. How do I maximize the amount of profit that I can make uh, within the United States? What this isn't, the market revolution is the beginning of industry. But you have to understand that like industry is not the dominating form of uh, the way that people produce on, in the economy. Uh, America during this time period is still largely agricultural okay and we have to understand that and we need to understand that because um, we're going to see shifts and development um, like towards an, agri an industrial society as we move closer to our next era which is the era of the second industrial revolution so let me zoom out a little okay so the Civil War happens between 1865 or 1861, really, and 1865. This is the Civil War. And the Civil War is a catalyst for greater economic development, okay? And um, this is going to lead us into a new era that is known as the Second Industrial Revolution. And the second industrial revolution is really going to take place between 1865 and I'm going to kind of cut it off um, probably for just the purposes of this activity um, around, uh, you know, 1901, which is the beginning of the progressive, the progressive era um, that's brought in by Teddy Roosevelt. Now, before we get into what the second industrial revolution was and how it kind of changed uh, from the market revolution and how it evolved America's economy, we have to understand that the second Revo industrial revolution would not have happened without new technologies. So let's zoom in here and I'm going to um, just go through some of the tech that's developing uh, really at the, uh, like during, right before the Civil War, the Civil War and after. So some of this technology was created before the second industrial revolution, but was incredibly influential during this era. Um, so like for example, the Bessemer process is a new technological development that actually happens in the 1850s, um, but it's gonna be super important to the time period that we're talking about right now, because the Bessemer process is gonna allow for the mass production of steel, which is gonna be used by um, Andrew Carnegie and the, uh, the U.S. Steel Corporation uh, during the Second Industrial Revolution. You've got the creation of the oil derrick during this time period, which is going to allow for um, like, like easier access to, to oil uh, and the, the drilling of a large amount of oil within the United States, which could then be turned into um, like 
like products like kerosene, which are going to be really, really useful and profitable for companies like the Standard Oil Trust. Um, speaking of kerosene, uh, it's during the 1850s that uh, they start to realize that uh, you know, oil can be turned into kerosene and that it is a easier way to light uh, houses and that it's, it's safer than, say, open flames. Um, it is during this time period that we see the development of new technologies like the telephone by Alexander Graham Bell. We see uh, Edison, Thomas Edison, with his creation of the light bulb as well as the distribution of electric power to new parts of the United States. We see the creation of new commercial farming in the form of the combine harvester. Um, and we also see throughout this entire time period, uh, expansion of the railroads. And probably the best example of that is the Transcontinental Railroad, uh, which was finished in 1869. Okay, so what is this tech doing for America? Let's get into the second industrial revolution and let's talk a little bit about what is different about the second industrial revolution versus the market revolution. So the biggest thing you have to understand is that in the market revolution, Americans are just beginning to create the first factories. Um, and in this time period, we're starting to see a, a dramatic shift uh, from a majority of Americans farming to all of a sudden a majority of Americans making their living in factories. So we're starting to see America become a fully industrialized society that relies on industrialization um, for their economic development. So let's write that down. So um, the biggest, one of the biggest things you have to understand about this era is that a majority of Americans begin making their livings in factories. And, um, and that's going to be really, really important because it's changing the nature of how people provide for themselves. Uh, it, the, the Jefferson's dream of the small yeoman farmer is being replaced more by a Hamiltonian uh, view uh, that favors big business. Speaking of big business, we see the rise of big businesses and trusts uh, in a way we had never seen in previous eras. So this is the era, this is an era that is dominated by big business and trusts. Um, like we see companies becoming, uh, in some cases, more powerful than the government. Uh, and we see the creation of, you know, Carnegie's U.S. Steel. We see uh, Rockefeller and his uh, Standard Oil Trust. Um, Vanderbilt is going to be pioneering the railroads. And then um, you've also got J.P. Morgan, who's a very influential banker, but J.P. Morgan is also one of the main investors in uh, Edison's Electric Light Company, uh, which eventually creates the, becomes the incredibly important company known as G General Electric. And they're going to be help, like they're going to be responsible for wiring up the United States and helping to electrify large parts of America by the end of this era. Now. Um, it's during this time period that we see a shift away from uh, industry being like mainly textiles, like they were in the market revolution. Now industry is becoming reliant on what we call heavy industry. Reliance on heavy industries. So we talk about heavy industries. The industries that are going to become the most dominant during this time period are going to be steel oil, coal, and the railroads. These industries, later it's going to be electricity, uh, these industries are going to be the dominant forces that are driving the economy uh, during this time period. It is also during this time period that because most of the work is shifting to factories, we're going to see um, workers becoming more and more unskilled. Okay, so um, like 
what's happening is uh, instead of having like craftsmanship that we've seen in previous eras, we're going to start to see people doing manual tasks that rely more on machinery uh, during this time period. And we see that like the workers start to be viewed as, as replaceable by these big governments. Or, I'm sorry, not big governments, big workers. Workers um, become more unskilled. This is uh, the fact that the uh, workers are viewed as replaceable is going to lead to um, a growing tensions that is going to lead to the growth of national unions. Okay, sorry, there we go. So this is uh, going to be the second industrial revolution. And you can see there's a, you, you need to know the evolution between these two things. You know, we start to see the seeds of the second industrial revolution are planted in the market revolution. Um, but we, like the market revolution does not represent a fully industrialized society. Yes, we've got the beginnings of the railroads here, but it's in this era that the railroads are going to come to dominate industry and become the most important form of transportation. We've got the earliest forms of factories here, but it's during this time period that new technologies allow those factories to um, evolve. You go from, say, t uh, factories in the north that are uh, I guess run by water, like water power along rivers. So all of a sudden now factories that are uh, like using like steam engines and then later electricity and are low located in major, major cities. Um, so we see kind of like this shift uh, that's happening and America's economy is evolving. It's becoming even more industrial. Now that takes us to uh, the last era that I want to go through. So if we um, just kind of continue our timeline, I'm going to create a, a new page here. Let's just zoom out here. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm only really going to work on like really two last errors. I'm uh, er, uh, era, eras, sorry. I'm going to start from 1901 and then kind of trace it to 1941. And then I'm going to also talk about a 1941 and after. So um, when we talk about this time period, 1901, uh, I want you to kind of think of this era as the era of the automobile. And um, that includes the Roaring Twenties. And then obviously uh, 1941 is gonna be uh, World War II and the post-war economic boom. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that because a lot of this um, is going to be after, uh, you know, the time period of the AP test. So I just want to kind of mention it, um, but it's not going to be something that we spend an enormous amount of time talking about today. So starting in the early 1900s, there's new technologies that are coming in that you do need to be aware of and are kind of changing America and changing um, industrialization in this country. So the new technology, and just a reminder, we're doing technology up here. And we're gonna talk about economic develops, developments down here. Okay, so the new technology that you do need to know uh, would include like the creation of the Model T, for example. Super important, uh, and we're gonna talk about it a lot in a second. Um, the moving assembly line. Also incredibly important, uh, and we'll discuss in a second. And then inventions like the radio, which is gonna improve communication. Uh, and the radio was first really utilized in World War I, and then immediately after in the 1920s, they started to learn how to actually transmit, uh, instead of just beeps, but actual people's voice via the radio, and it kind of took off as a, a major form of communication, uh, connecting all parts of the country, but also um, in, like leading to commercialization, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. So let's talk about the era of the automobile and the roaring 20s. What do we need to know about this time period uh, in the 19, early 1900s, 1910s, 1920s? Um, it's going to kind of, I guess, struggle a little in the 30s because of the, the Great Depression. 
Um, but what are some of the kind of defining features? The first thing that you need to know, one of the most important defining features of this era is the rise of something called Fordism. And one of the most important figures in the economic development of the United States during this time period is, is Henry Ford. So whereas um, like in like the previous time period during the second industrial revolution, you've got like, like titans of industry such as um, Carnegie and Rockefeller uh, and JP Morgan leading the charge. In this time period, Henry Ford is really one of the most important industrialists in America. And he's important because like his idea of Fordism is all about like taking um, Taylorism and this idea of, uh, um, fostering efficiency to create a better way of mass producing goods in the United States. And so it's during this time period under Fordism that we see improvements to American mass production. So the moving assembly line, like people, when they think about factories, like today we think of the moving assembly line there's like a conveyor belt and like good like um products come down and workers work on them in stations that is not was not typical prior to fordism um like when we think about like large-scale factories they're uh they weren't using moving assembly lines during the second industrial revolution uh but ford kind of implements this as the new standard for production uh during this time period and he just he realizes that you can you can basically create really complex machines like cars and his Model T by having workers at stations build those cars as they kind of come through on these conveyor belts or on these assembly lines. And what this does is it speeds up the work. Um, it allows him to be as efficient as possible. And, and what that does is, is it allows for these cars, which were really, really uh, expensive before this time period, uh, to be able to be mass produced faster and more cheaply. So what that does is it brings down the price of goods. Now, in addition to uh, making things more cost effective, he also paid his workers a, a better living wage. And by doing this, he put more money in the hands of his workers, um, which allowed them to be able to buy the actual cars that they were producing. Now, this creates a situation where we have increased consumerism. Because new and more efficient ways of producing goods is going to lead to the, the, uh, the cost of those products coming down, making them more affordable. And then uh, Ford is going to kind of lead this charge for uh, paying workers more so that they can buy the products that they're making. And with more money in workers' pockets, uh, that is going to lead to more people buying stuff. Uh, and this whole process is going to lead to uh, more economic growth and industrial production in the United States, really up until the, the Great Depression. In fact, actually, um, in the 1920s, one of the things they suffer from is they actually have too overproduction. Um, that's how efficient this is. And so uh, we see by the 1930s, uh, there's a surpluses of these goods. And um, like when the, the stock market crashes, they have way too much uh, on, on hand and they can't you know, sell everything. Um, but that same industrial production is going to be super, super important to the next era, which is World War II. And it's this increased industrial production that is going to be put to use in the United States to help win World War II. But uh, instead of essentially making uh, Model Ts, America is going to be making long range bombers and it's going to be making tanks and so on. Now, uh, in this last era during in World War II, um, we are going to see new technology emerge. And actually, I, I want to backtrack really quick here before I get into that. Before I forget, one of the other things that lead to this uh, increased consumerism that I want to make like mention of is the increase in advertising, which we see especially through the radio. And so the radio is going to also, in addition to the, these higher wages, in addition to the fact that uh, like goods are going to be able to be produced more efficiently, new advertisement and the creation of mass media like the radio is also going to lead to a growth of consumerism. 
Okay, so that takes us to uh, World War II. And there's new tech that's uh, created in the 1950s. I'm not going to go through all of it. Um, but obviously, you've got with the Manhattan Project, the establishment of uh, atomic energy and the atomic bomb. Um, we also see in the uh, decade following World War uh, II, the rise of the television as a new form of mass media. Um, you also see the beginnings of what will become the first computers, which by obviously the, our, like, like by the 1970s, 1980s, they're going to lead to the digital age. So like, what is happening uh, as a result of World War II? Well, the biggest thing that you need to know that's really happening with World War II and after is that America's economy, starting with World War II, is going to begin a process called globalization. And of course, you can make an argument that this is happening beforehand. But we really see this at, uh, with World War II and beyond. And uh, essentially, the United States economy is going to start to become increasingly linked uh, with economies around the world. And we are going to continue to see this process grow um, as, uh, you know, Amer as we in enter into like further and further in the 20th century uh, and as we get closer to today. Uh, we are not going to like go through globalization and a lot of these other things. We've talked about it in class. You've read about it in your book. Um, I'm not going to review it now because it's not going to be on the, the AP test. But just be aware of that as a major effect of World War II. Okay, so that's all I have. Um, this essentially is your uh, the history of the economic development um, of America. It's very, very broad, um, very broad, but it hopefully gives you an overview of how America is moving from uh, a colonial mercantilistic economy to the developments of industry through like uh, America fully industrializing and then improving on that industry uh, and becoming a global economic power. Um, so kind of keep those things in mind because you can see if you look at this timeline, uh, clear, clear continuities, clear changes, uh, but also we can make some comparisons from one era to the next. And if you understand those concepts, you should be okay on the day of the AP test. Okay, 